Hi everyone, Matt Metzger here with ABI Attachments. Welcome back to another episode of the ABI Dirt. Not so long ago, president and co-owner of ABI Attachments, Mr. Scott Holmes, had the chance to virtually chat with one of the leading equine clinicians in the US, Dana Hokana. Dan is a longtime friend of ABI Attachment. She's been using a TR3 and most recently a TR3 E-Series Equine Edition for about 15 years now. She's a beloved friend here around ABI Attachments. We love picking her brain on all things care for the horse and practical advice for the rider. And in this short chat, uh, they had the chance to talk about why a quality arena drag is just so darn important for all kinds of training and riding needs. So let's dive in and enjoy the conversation. I started out and honestly didn't know much about ground. And I trained for a lot of years at another a stable that other people, I was at the mercy of their ground. And I remember one stable I trained at, they for a while dumped their manure and shavings in our riding arena, right? And they said, oh, it'll be good. Well, winter came and it got wet. And I mean, my horses had tendon injuries, problems. It was horrible. Other stables I was at, it was a real lot of sand and the ground was hard. So when I got my own training facility and my own ranch, Ranch about 33 years ago, about 32, 33 years ago, the ground meant a lot to me. And my husband made a makeshift homemade drag because I didn't know about you guys. And when I, I met you, you know, his homemade little drag, right? Okay. And little did we know, okay? And that homemade drag kind of got tossed out pretty soon because when I got the classic equine at drag, everything changed for me. The classic drag was so good. The classic is amazing and great, but the E-Series took it to a new level. Literally, when I'm riding, sometimes my horses just don't feel like they're moving as good. If my ground needs done, as soon as we do the ground with our E-Series, the softness that they, they feel the comfort, the trust of what's under them in the ground. So now we are fanatics about the ground. And, and I just think that so many people who have horses need to pay a little attention to it. And I'm yeah. hoping that you can bring some light on that subject. Yeah, right? I'll, I'll, I'll try to. I, I, you know, it, it's like germs. You don't think about germs because you don't see germs. So you don't wash your hand as mm -hmm. much as you should. And you don't, you know, protect yourself from germs as much as you should because you can't see them. And I, I relate that to footing underneath the surface. People can see the top of the surface. So they'll take a chain harrow or they'll take an s time yeah. drag that just kind of bounces and, and a little roller and they'll smooth out the top surface. But they can't see the three inches or the four inches or the six inches underneath the surface. And that's the most mm -hmm. critical part of the footing. But you don't see it, so you don't think about it and you don't know about it. And that that's where, that's where a horse stops traveling well in, in the arena. That's that's when a horse starts having soundness issues because they'll have really soft spots and then really hard spots. And then they'll have deep holes and they'll have really shallow so they'll get concussed. And now the horse stops thinking. The horse is now responding to the danger or the discomfort of the footing and they're no longer listening to the, to the seat cues, the rain cues. You know, even the connection between the, the, the rider and the horse is interrupted because what's underneath the surface is causing stress. I have a horse now that has a little collateral ligament issues and other little problems that it is critical that we work her on safe, solid footing so that that foot doesn't roll or move. And so how many horses, like you said, what a really, really good point. Yeah. They can't focus on the training or the performance any longer or you because they are in protection mode. Right. And that's what bad ground does. It puts yeah. your horse in protection mode. Well, Rainers will stop. Yeah, you just mentioned something else too. At ABI, we talk a lot about longevity because yeah. it's just making the horse perform well. Although that's that's important, but it's it's how long can you have that relationship with that horse? Oh, yeah. You don't you yeah. don't want to turn a horse out every five to six years because they're lame. Yeah. Uh, you know, you you want a long long life relationship with that with that equine. Mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. When a horse is sound, then a horse lasts mm -hmm. long. That's just the bottom line. Yeah. And, and so it's not just the the responsiveness of the horse, but it's also mm -hmm. the longevity of the horse. And so, you know, footing is, uh, well, I, you know, when I first met you, I don't know if you remember this, I had a little slogan that we actually trademarked called footing is everything. Yeah. And yeah. We it is. started to bring that back, uh, just that, that, little, that little slogan, because footing is everything. 
It, you know, it really, really is. And, and, you know, a lot of people, it's sort of funny. A lot, a lot of people have a mindset that, um, well, I realize I have to get my horse injected once a year, or I need a few thousand dollars allocated for vet bills once a year to just maintain my horse. Right. right. Or whatever. They spend a lot of money on Adequan legend, whatever it may be. And I agree with all that a hundred percent, but they don't, think that they have the budget for a good arena drag and yet my classic drag has lasted 15 18 years it's still in great shape yeah, yeah. i just happen to now have a better one right? right and our horses need it too we were at a horse show one time um in central california and the ground was super deep and we were showing the raining because yeah. we had we've had a lot of rainers through the years and we had a rainer that tore a suspensor attendant yeah. because the ground was just too deep when we when we make errors on our part right which we do sometimes and our horse suffers i mean it feels horrible and nobody wants that yeah. but but like you said about the germ analogy we don't see what's under the ground right. right we don't see what's under there so if our horse and i'll just never forget my husband's homemade drag way back mm -hmm. you know is my analogy all the time I'd be like, you got to go back and forth sideways and long ways right. because there's a rut and I feel my horse landing in that. Circle. You know, it's not okay. Yeah, circles. you got to get that thing where there's a base and and none of us want to hurt our horses, but we may not even realize we're hurting our horses if we're not right. paying attention to the ground. Right. No, and that's, that's where not. I get to do <laughs> Well, you know, going back to your horse with a suspens suspensory injury. Yeah. It took a year for that horse to recover, but I promise you that horse has never been the same. Because yeah, once, no. once there is a leg is issue like that, an injury to that to that horse's uh, you know leg, yes, they'll recover. Yes, they can build back strength, but it, it's never the same as not being injured in the first place. I've had shoulder surgery. My shoulder is not the same as it was 15 years ago. Yeah. Yes, I've done my rehab. Yes, I have a strong shoulder. It's not the original shoulder, though, I can promise you. That's sort of why I, I'm saying, and it's not like just about the money of it, but it's about the mindset of what we put in our minds for our budgets with our horses. Mm -hmm. And I know that most of the people I work with and with the good financing that's out there, mm -hmm. I know they can have a drag. Right. And I don't think people realize the importance of the drag. Yeah. It, it's as important as the right bit, the right saddle. Uh, yeah. I mean, all those things that play yeah. into I, I may think more too, but I don't want to take away from those things. Those things are important. No. Um, but I, I'll tell you this, it's more important than the quality of the trailer or the quality of the stall door that you have. <laughs> oh, big time, right? <laughs> what more does that do to the, the life of the horse? Sorry. More yeah. important than how much silver's on your show saddle or how good a jacket you're riding. Yeah, exactly right. Shows, right. More important. Yeah, but, I, I, um, I, love it, I love it when people come up to, <laughs> to us at a trade show and they've got a $4,000 jacket on. And they go, oh my gosh, twenty five hundred dollars. That's you guys are crazy for an arena. Yeah. <laughs> I've I never spent that on some drag. I can make a hero. <laughs> right. I, I don't even get the mentality, but some people are like that. That's okay. Yeah, but if you really love your horse, you better think about their ground. Oh, no, absolutely. <laughs> That's all we've got on the dirt today, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the conversation with Anna. She is delightful. She also is just a wealth of information. So uh, if you would like to learn more from Dana, we're gonna have some links in the description below. Uh, also, she has her own website, her own socials. Check out all of her info. She's fantastic. She loves caring for the horse and she loves preparing riders uh, for top level performance. So check out her information. And since we talked about quality arena footing today, we would love to hear from you in the comments below. Give us, give us a not so great story. If there's ever been a time where you're practicing, you're training, or maybe you're in the middle of a show and the footing just wasn't that great, uh, give, us, give us your story. Give us an example below. We'd love to hear from you. But until next time, take care.